Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. So you can tell that I am quite sick right now, but alas, a new Abyss 12 has dropped. So you know what that means? A new Abyss 12 video! Woohoo! This new Abyss 12 is actually pretty bonkers and it is definitely the hardest one that we've gotten since version 4.0. Let's go ahead and take a look at the two teams that we'll be using for our four star only run first. And then of course I will talk about some potential teams you guys can use. And if I manage to get to it, perhaps a quick speed run as well. We have of course Benny Boy. The top half of Abyss 12 is just gonna be the classic um, I guess international four-star national team. We have Bennett on the Sapwood Blade, and I'm so sorry about my voice. It sounds absolutely terrible right now, but you know, I I like getting these uh, Abyss 12 videos out to you guys. So here we are. So Bennett, of course, just the usual stuff for Bennett, and we have Xiang Ling, and she is, I believe, built to do a bit more damage with the catch as well as the four-piece emblem of Severed Fates with a lot of energy recharge. Next, we have Xingqiu, Sacrificial Sword. Uh, usual stuff. Now in this case, Xingqiu's damage actually does matter a little bit for this team. In comparison to usual, it matters, but in this one, it matters even more. So you'll see when we get to that part. And then finally, we have Sucrose, standard sacrificial fragments, uh, four-piece viridescent veneer, the usual shenanigans with Sucrose. Nothing too crazy there. Now, the next team though, I absolutely love because I love any excuse to use Sayu and this team has Sayu. So, First off, we're starting with Fischl. She's pretty well built with the Stringless as well as Four Piece Thundering Fury. Uh, in case, you know, I kind of desync her elemental skill, uh, this helps with the cooldown a bit. So then we have Kuki Shinobu, who is also built as an aggravate DPS character. And she is just the typical Tukabo Shigire, uh, along with the Four Piece Gilded Dreams. Very reasonable build with her. And it's always fun to run a DPS Kuki Shinobu. Then we have Sayu. So Sayu is built with the Rain Slasher as well as with a kind of DPS uh, build on the four piece Viridescent Veneer. You see there, and we have <laughs> her build right here. So she can contribute a bit of aggravate damage herself as well. Then we have DMC who is just a Favonius uh, crit wielder. And I guess she has deep wood memories uh that's a mistake i should have had her on the noblesse oblige but hey we cleared it with this team so you guys can optimize it a tiny bit better with uh, with your traveler starting off this abyss 12 i found that running over to this side um helped with this part a lot because we are able to kind of pull the enemies a bit closer together and this also allows Xing Chou's Sacrificial Sword to hit both the Pyro Abyss Mage as well as one of the blue balls. That way, Sacrificial Sword will activate its passive and we are able to just bust the Pyro Abyss Mage shield pretty much instantly. Now, on some runs that I did this, I was able to single cycle the first wave, but in this specific run, I was not, and it's not really a big deal. Uh, fortunately, this... Okay, so 12-1-1 is very time-consuming and definitely took me over 90 seconds uh, with this team. If you get some pretty good rotations on, like, for example, single cycling the first wave with some um, good grouping against these two, then you are able to beat it with this team in under 90 seconds as well. And if you just, you know, get better than I am doing at the game as well, that helps too. But still, um, these two, they like to teleport a lot and... I mean, I don't really think it's too important to know what they do that much because you can always just, you know, tank and spank and outheal them and stuff. But they are very aggressive. They teleport and they do that. Um, the, the wind one teleports and does that thing where she kind of slams down on your head. And I don't really know what the other one does. But this this honestly isn't all that remarkable in the sense that, you know, you just try to keep them together. I think it might make more sense to stay on the Hydra one because the wind one can, is, is it Hydra or is it Cryo? But the non-anima one, um, because the anima one likes to teleport to you more so than the other elements. So now I'm just building up their bursts and I don't want to burn any of their bursts so I can conserve them for the next round. And as we can see, it is very painful to do the last bit of damage. 
So we definitely could have done this a lot faster had we just burned our bursts there or, you know, just had a slightly better run. But either way, 12-1-2 um, is very easy, which is why I didn't really care too much about my time in 12-2-1 or 12-1-1. So the Jade Plume Terror Shroom, you guys know it's it's one of the easier bosses because it is immediately vulnerable. It doesn't really have any iframes. It is a bit dangerous, but... Um, you know, most teams should be able to survive pretty easily against it. Now, especially Electro against this thing will cripple it, right? You can see here it's just laying down. It's just tanking, you know, it's just taking a spanking right now from all our Electro DPS characters. You have to, personally, I like using Fischl before I move to Sayu. That way it's almost guaranteed to have Electro on the enemy because otherwise it can be a bit tricky to have Electro on the enemy with this team. And that allows Sayu to get the swirl, which is an easy clap for our green chicken. Now, 12-2 is interesting because um, this has a ton of elements for these uh, what's specters, right? And in particular, there are pyro specters in here. So you actually need to rely on non-pyro damage, which, well, this team is mainly pyro damage because of Xiangling. So in this case, we are relying on Xing Chou's personal damage to take out the specters there. And this allows us to then set up against the um, Whopper Flowers, which I didn't set it up properly, but oh well, not a big deal. And here, uh, even though Whopper Flowers do have higher pyro resistance, they're pretty squishy in comparison to a lot of modern enemies, and Iridescent Swirl will, you know, crush their resistances to let you pretty much take them out regardless. But still, now, um, from what I found, I, you can kind of keep these guys grouped together, and you just kind of run around the outskirts and the edges of the four of them while using some kind of animal character to just them bounce them up and down and you know kind of group them together and we can see that the ones on the outskirts are pretty much dead and i should focus the big guy here but instead i focus the lancer for some reason because the big guy has, still has much more hit points in comparison now an interesting thing about this is that the big guy will use his geo shockwaves on you which will create crystallizes which create shields which can be problematic if they hit your crystallizes if you have self-applicating elements or just take damage from the other ones so you see here now i'm just going to focus on battering up my team um, because you know i wasted basically a full rotation against this thing but we managed to get all of our characters burst back up so we are gucci or 12 3 1. Now 1232, it is just the perpetual mechanical array, but I am cutting it a bit close in terms of the time, especially with this team. While this team does have single target damage focus, you know, obviously it's not an incredibly meta team with the characters that we have in it. We have Kuki, we have Sayu, and Sayu is going to be extremely important uh, in 1232, which we will see soon enough. But anyway, um, just doing a little bit of official, uh, you can do some machine gun stuff if you want, but you guys should know the Perpetual Mechanical Ray goes through a few attacks during its first phase, and after which it will go into panic mode, or if you do enough damage to it, it will also go into panic mode. But here we're not doing enough damage to it, so it will go to panic mode based on the amount of time that we're spending to kill this thing. In panic mode, it spawns four robots, and you find the one with the gold circle around it. That's the one that's vulnerable, and you need to take it out. Now, I wasn't sure if the these robots then have two different main attack patterns. In this case, I was hoping for the crab to jump at me, so I, it could jump towards the core of the perpetual mechanical ray, but this works too. Uh, we're just able to knock it down, and now perpetual mechanical ray is in its down state after you kill its little buddy. So you just output a bunch of single target DPS against it. Now, unfortunately, this is cutting it really, really close. But you can see that in 12-1, in 12-2-1, the top half, um, I definitely could have saved a lot of time on that one, but I wasted, you know, almost a full rotation on the big boy husk guy. So anyway, 12-3 is where things got really interesting. And this is where um, I actually failed in my first go through at this. So that's why I really focused on battering up the top half team to get me as much time as possible to deal with the second half of this Abyss 12. Now, uh, the first time I went through it, I did not bring Sayu, so that was painful. I'll have a clip of that later. But this one, you know, the top half, um, you guys can pretty much just tank and spank these things. They do a lot of damage, but with healing, with Shincho, with some kind of damage mitigation, uh, you will be fine against it. And, uh, you know, it's just a single target fight that just literally stays in the middle. It has some stuff that pushes you outward a bit with the animal damage. And you might die a couple times trying this, but that's what the retry button is for. You can see here, 
easy clap for this team. Nothing too remarkable, but we wanted to get as much time as possible for this next enemy. This next enemy, the Arith whatever Enhancer Mech. I brought Sai because she's a Claymore character and she can plunge this thing to death. Oh, break the Geo Shield here, which she can do it in I think six, seven plunges in comparison to a sword character, which takes, I forget, but like 12 something, 13 maybe. So compared to sword characters, which have worse frame data, as well as take, you know, do less damage on their plunge, like do less um, poise damage or whatever the metric is called, shield damage. Um, to the Geo Shield. So yeah, that's why Sai is so important. And anyway, um, this thing has a couple very dangerous attack patterns, including the Shockwave, as well this Shockwave right there. Once like this kind of um, you know circular or whatever thing goes up, you see there you can jump over the Shockwave, which I completely failed at doing there. But also, um, I personally like kind of setting up my team's rotation right before I break its shield. That way, I get the maximum amount of kind of DPS from. At prior post breaking its shield oh, i forgot to speak for a sec but we can see here that thanks to sayu being able to absolutely crush its shield very very fast in comparison to other options and now here we can see um, i'm trying to jump dodge the shockwaves and i don't know why i didn't jump there i guess i wasn't paying attention or something but rinse and repeat at this point you can see sayu is absolutely crushing it and the enemy will you know attack you throughout it has a few different attacks it has these three geo things on the ground which i believe you can also dodge by jumping and you can obviously just move out of the way to dodge it as well now we finish this thing off with a good old classic sayu aggravate roll uh, dps build you love to see it an interesting an interesting way to tackle a new enemy <laughs> So here's a really quick speed run as well that I just did in my first attempt. And we can see that the top half is very, very Nuvolet friendly. I mean, literally everything doesn't really resist Hydro and just instantly dies to him. So yeah, with Farina buffing his damage, it's uh, completely trivial to, you know, one cycle everything in this Abyss 12. And for the Spectres though, um, I decided to spin the wind really quick to take them out faster so they would, uh, you know, do their self-destruct. And then you just do the full spin the wind against the Whopper Flowers plus the four Husk guys and damn, just like that, easy clear. And then for this thing, um, there are setups where you don't need to use Farina's Burst here, but oh well. So then we just laser down the boss in literally just 10 seconds. Yep, Nuvolet broken as always. So I'm going to give you guys some additional tips for this Abyss 12. Now as we can see the top half, we're going to start with the top half, is very favored towards Hydro damage. If we actually look at all the other elements, we have enemies that resist pretty much every element except for Hydro. We have these things that resist Pyro, we have these things that resist Dendro, we have the Spectres which are immune to Dendro. We have these things that are immune to Electro, so on and so forth. Now these husks, uh, I believe this one resists Hydro by 30%, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, it's just 30% resistance, you will easily crush through it. So the top half is super favored for a character like Nuvolet or other Hydro DPS characters. You are going to have a good time in the top half. Now speaking of which, the top half is very, very bulky. This first chamber has over 5 million hit points, with each of the blue balls having about 1 million hit points, as well as these Fatui operatives having between 1.4 to 1.5 million hit points. The character that deals Hydro damage in AoE is absolutely going to destroy this, aka Nuvolet, but other Hydro DPS characters like Child and Ioto are going to do fine as well. Now we have 1221, which you guys saw with the Spectres at the very beginning. You can group them, you can swirl them down with Hydro or even, you know, various element swirls. It will do a lot of damage to the Spectres, and of course Nuvolet has the AoE to destroy them all, as well as Child and Ayato should be able to destroy them too. And we have the Whopper Flowers that spawn after that, and finally all the four Husk guys that spawn after that. Next we have 1231 with the Ice Wind Dirge of Capella. Main things to note about this enemy is that it resists both Cryo as well as Animo by 70%. Now, as we can see, uh, Pyro also did okay here. Although there are the Pyro Spectres, Pyro Whopper Flowers, as well as the Pyro Abyss Mage, 
we could see that despite that our Nash International team was able to complete it with Xiangling being the main DPS because outside of the Pyro Spectre nothing fully resists Pyro and the Pyro Whopper Flowers are squishy enough to deal with reasonably well anyway. So you can also rely on a Pyro DPS as long as you have a second source of damage to help deal with the Pyro Spectres as well as the Pyro Whopper Flowers. So let's talk about the second half. The second half has the Jade Plume, it also has the Perpetual Mechanical Ray and finally it has the Veteran Arithmetic Enhancer mech and it's this enhancer mech that really will dictate what kind of team you construct for the second half now in my first run through i didn't really know what the veteran arithmetic enhancer mech did and i brought no claymore characters and no geo so it was not a good time it took about 10 plunge attacks from a sword character to break through his geo shield obviously claymores did well that you could see there it takes about six plunge attacks from a claymore to break through this Geo Shield and Claymores have better frame data on their plunge attacks as well. Now, of course, Geo characters will also tear through the shield really quickly. Geo damage is great for breaking Geo Shields, and you can see in this clip that Zhongli's hold E as well as his Meteor pretty much got rid of most of its shield. And interestingly, this thing doesn't resist Geo damage either, so you don't have to worry about what type of damage you bring with to deal with it more so you just need a way to break its shield I, I guess i didn't really talk about the perpetual mechanical array or the jade plume tear shroom but the jade plume tear shroom resists dendro but even with just the deep wood memories you should be able to blast through it uh, pretty reasonably even with a hyper plume team and for the perpetual mechanical array this thing resists physical by a lot but there's nothing else much to really say about it hopefully that helps you guys out with this Abyss 12, this Abyss 12's HP values are indeed much higher, but it is a lot of fun and it was a lot of fun trying to figure out how to beat the new Arithmetic Enhancer Mech Dude. Let me know what teams you guys use to beat this Abyss 12 down in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe as that helps my channel out a ton. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.